Good afternoon. I'm going to do a video about Maine, but it's not going to be my normal video about Maine. I'm doing a video about prohibition in Maine and how Maine affected prohibition in the United States. Um, the smuggling routes through Maine, uh, the bootleggers, the rum runners, the uh, s smugglers, pretty much. That's the best way to put it. The smugglers and how Maine was always a smuggling state. Um, but how did prohibition start? Prohibition started in Maine, unfortunately. A guy, an out-of-stater, a flatlander, big surprise, moved to Portland and became Portland's mayor. And he had this push in 1851 to prohibit the sale and use of alcohol. Big surprise, now the stater comes in the state, tries to change anything. That hasn't changed in centuries. But that, that was the, the beginning of prohibition in Maine. Um, but Mainers, Mainers love their booze and we wouldn't let that stand. We're gonna still drink our drinks and enjoy life and not let anybody tell us how, how to act. Not let a flatlander come in and tell us how to be Mainers. But this, these are some stories about prohibition or how prohibition affected Maine and how Maine over, overcame prohibition through smuggling and making their own booze. All right, enjoy my stuff. Thank you. Subscribe, like, um, leave a comment. Thank you much. So we're going to start off with the rum runners. Um, Rum runners used established trade routes on the coastal, on the coast of Maine, as uh, to to haul their stuff, to to bring in the booze to different places, um, using already already established ports um, and trade routes that have been used for pretty much a century since the 17 8 or 1600s, um, and smuggling in Maine is was huge before. Prohibition. So, like, they were already established. It was an easy entrance. Um, they ha really didn't have a hard time because Mainers love booze and the, the trade routes and, and smuggling routes were already established. So, the rum runners would bring pretty much any rum from any state that, was, that did not have prohibition into Maine. Or the Canadian rum, rum runners would bring it from Canada, like Nova Scotia. Um, and just bring it in. It was easy for them. It was easy money. Um, but they would use the mid coast and down east trade routes to get there. Uh, one of the biggest ports they used is Belfast uh, or harbors, Belfast Harbor. Uh, like to this day, you can find prohibition era type stuff in the harbor, which would be really cool to metal detect or scuba dive. I, I would love to I would love to do that but that was one of the major harbors that they would use um, and it's it, to the, like I said to this day you can still find stuff so that the rum runners so I'm going to talk about the railroad and prohibition um, this goes more into prohibition in, into the early 1900s um, during the U when the U.S. was actually had prohibition versus Maine, uh, the railroads were used a lot. Uh, Maine, uh, Maine, especially northern Maine, ha that's how things got around. That's how people got around is the, the railroad. Um, Jackman, Maine was a huge supply point, a logistic supply point in Maine. So a lot of bootleg liquor went in from Canada into Maine and into Jackman. Jackman's less than 20 miles away from the Canadian border. Um, from Jackman, it would be shipped to wherever in the United States, Maine, United States. Um, it's interesting how like, I never thought about Jackman being like a major booze port or booze stop, but it was back in that time. Um, before, like. And when the laws and law enforcement started cracking down on bootlegging, bootleggers would 
would f have a headstone. They would make a spot look like a grave and use the grave to mark where their smuggled goods were or would leave a message for other smugglers. Um, there's, they had a different set of codes, um, di different years dif meant different things, different names meant, went, meant something else. And uh, it was pretty interesting how they 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 had this set up. Well, they already had it set it up set up from for a long time. These smuggling routes into the United States had already been set up for for a long time. So, like I said before, it was easy for them to smuggle booze into Maine and into the United States and use use Jackman as a port or not a port. I keep saying port. Use Jackman as a logistical stopping point for bootleg booze. So now we're gonna talk about the bootleggers of Maine, the guys who made it themselves in the state of Maine and didn't need anybody else to, to buy it from. They could sell it, make it, supply it to everybody, they, anybody they wanted to. Everybody always talks about the importation of booze from Canada during Prohibition. Mainers already had, had it down. We'd been doing it, Maine was a frontier for centuries, uh, well, 200 years, 200, 300 years. Um, the French brought it from, from France and f into Canada, so French Canadians, and the Irish brought it from Massachusetts, and the English brought it from Massachusetts. So Mainers knew, had known how to make beer and booze and wine and any other spirits you could think of. Um, but it, like, it's just cool to go into some of the old towns and try to find where these these uh, speakeasies were. Maine does have speakeasies, you just need to know where to find them. Um, it's amazing, like the, the old post office in Waterville, uh, oldest, oldest building in Waterville, still standing. It used to be a speakeasy, and now where there, there's a pub, mainly brews, uh, beneath the old post office, that used to be a speakeasy. So it's just interesting knowledge, interesting, you know, history, like Mainers did, Mainers have always been Mainers. They've been re reliant on themselves, self-reliant and uh, resilient. So you can take our booze, we're gonna figure out a way to make our own. And that's how, that's how Maine is, that's how Mainers are. 